UK and European Union have accused China of carrying out a major cyber attack earlier this year. The attack targeted Microsoft Exchange servers and affected over a quarter of a million servers all around the world. Excuse me, do you have the time? China has hacked critical U.S. infrastructure in the search for malicious computer code and systems that control American power grids and water supplies. For a long time, the threat actor locked in the shadows. Their exploits so enormous that they were considered a myth by even the best cybersecurity analysts. Microsoft said it detected malware associated with China in Guam, where there's a huge American base, saying that it could disrupt critical communications infrastructure between the U.S. and the Asia region. Referred to by a sinister codename, the Chinese Dark Army, and depicted in one of the greatest TV series of all time. The zero days wrapped in code like a Christmas present, then becomes an exploit. The programmatic expression of my will. I live for this shit. Not much else is known about them beyond that. That was until 2020, when their exploits spilled into the public domain thanks to India. The Chinese Dark Army had finally reared its ugly head onto the public scene. And even though the Chinese Dark Army is not a term referring to only one APT, this is definitely one of them. And its name is Daggerfly, aka Evasive Panda. And to India and death trap Sub-Sahara Africa, it carried a special gift, the apocalypse. This is Moran. Tagafly, aka Evasive Panda, aka Bronze Highland, was first spotted in 2020 by a cybersecurity company called Malwarebytes active since 2014 and is considered a younger sibling of another APT-41 aka Gallium, all of them originating from China. Modus operandi. They gain initial access primarily through a phishing email with an archive file that contains the payload. The zero day is wrapped in code like a Christmas present, then becomes an exploit, the programmatic expression of my will. Normally Cobalt Strike or a variant of MGBot, malware. Alternatively, they've been found to abuse sharing protocols such as AnyDesk, Microsoft sharing to sideload payloads plugins such as Plug X Loader, which is used to load other pieces of malware into the victim's machine. Their payload is quite a sophisticated piece of art. It allows for functionalities such as credential dumping using PowerShell, where they retrieve usernames and passwords from the credential manager. They also create persistence by creating a local account. The payload itself has multiple functionalities spanning from an info steal with modules for network scanning, active directory enumeration, key logging, screen and clipboard grabber, audio capture, and a process watchdog, something like task manager. Who are their main targets? These guys predominantly target telecommunication companies, specifically in Asia, Middle East, and Sub-Sahara Africa, believed to be after mass intelligence on end users of either enemy countries or people in their sphere of influence. Their victims, though they are not very forthcoming, are telecommunication companies found in the Middle East. In 2020, it was found that they had attacked a major telecommunication company in India, which served anywhere between 200 and 300 million customers and is partially owned by the government of India. No official statement specifically identifies the company. A major telecommunication company in Hong Kong was found to have been compromised for about six months. They serve end users both in Hong Kong and a significant number in Taiwan. And again, the identity of the company was not released. However, this one had a very interesting reason. It was for national security reasons. In 2023, a major telecommunication company in Africa was found to have been compromised by variants of MGBot. The company spans over 10 countries and is believed to be mostly in West Africa and South Africa. Even though the company was not named, it is quite obvious which it is. Is it perhaps the same one that suffered a DDoS this month and crippled the biggest economy in Africa? Maybe. The victim was not named. 
how would you prevent an attack from daggerfly? The biggest and the main tactic would be cyber awareness. Make sure your employees in your organization know the difference between a legitimate email and a phishing email because this is how they will gain initial access. Train them on email etiquette, not to accept or click on links from strange emails, etc. Making sure you have up-to-date systems, obviously. Any systems or applications that are used to share information in the organization should have access control. This includes systems like file transfer, applications, any desk, etc and also perform constant security system audit this is to ensure that a threat actor does not stay in your network for very very long no i think i pushed all i can you go thank you for watching if you like the video remember to subscribe to support the channel you can watch our other videos for example the one on 2023 videos on kenya or another video on another threat actor such as revel or non sudan i'll see you next time